training sessions where we bring in executives from corporations uh, who have a message to get to the media. Many times if they've been, you know, the more senior they are, over time I'm finding that the more jaundiced their view is. Uh, in other words, they, they say, oh, you know, those, those buggers, they're just out to get me. They, you know, and, and, and they know that, hey, if they get a, a nice story up, well, that's nice. They can show it to their mum, their wife, their you know, boss, but they know that if they get a negative story up or if there's an element of negativity, they, they feel that there's going to be a kick in the pants from someone. And so we're at pains to say to them, to point out, look, journalists aren't out to get you. Most of the time, they have a job to do, they're professionals, they, they're looking for information. And so we try and kind of alleviate their concern a little bit. Uh, what's your take on that? Uh, because often I hear from journalists, well, you know, the people in the corporations, they're just trying to hide stuff. They don't like, you know, what's your take on that relationship and, and, and how it ought to work and how, how it works? Well, I think things work reasonably well. I think the government is too restrictive of information and it does that, you know, um, for similar reasons that, that corporations probably do. I think that some journalists are out to get uh, some, some people in power, whether that be corporate or government, um, but uh, a lot of the time that they are out to get them, it's for a reason. Um, for example, you know, if there's some corruption, maybe it's in a union. You know, if there's some some, some lying going on in, in in government or opposition circles. You know, um, I think people who are engaging in you know what you might call misconduct or, or or even just lying perhaps deserve to be exposed. So you know, they know that um, that is a risk that they play. Now, as for someone who just feels like they're just doing their business. Um, well, yeah, there'll be people who just want a negative story. That is that is an aspect of the media. But as you say, there is also people who just want to sort of say or explain what's going on. Mm. I do think, generally speaking, um, it's a case of um, providing information, as you say, but I think it's also a case of identifying which journalists you can trust. Not distrusting everybody, mm. but looking at track records, which are actually publicly available. You can, you know, you can see yeah. what people produce. You can see whether they're trustworthy journalists. If they're not trustworthy, maybe it is wise not to trust them. But you need to find some way to engage with them and not completely just, you know, close off to them. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of. I'm, I'm not one who sort of sees journalists as virtuous. I think, you know that they play a really important role, but, uh, you know, not, not always the good guys. Right. Like, and it's, it must be, there must be challenges in t training young journalists to go out and ask tough questions, lift up rocks and look behind closed doors, potentially, because there, are potential, cause there, are, there might be legal risks for them, there might be uh, all kinds of other challenges. How do you educate them around those issues? It does take time. I mean, at the Herald, we, we do it by having a one-year traineeship. Um, but, you know, ongoing professional development is important as well. It's actually quite complex journalism because, you know, you have to have um, personal skills. You have to have a knowledge of special areas like, you know, business or even a part of business, yes. um, you, you know, or, or anything really, sport or what have you. Um, you have to know how to write. You have to know how to ask good questions or tough questions. Um, you know, preferably you um, are a critical thinker as well, and that can be developed, I think. It's not, you know, something that you're born with. Um, so there is a lot, you know, there's media regulations that you need to be very aware of and work within, I suppose. There's, um, you know, other technologies, new technologies like video and, and social media. And so in, in a way, it's just getting harder, I suppose, because there, as I said, there's less resources. So there's, you know, there, a lot of effort needs to go into professional development and it doesn't always happen in every media outlet. So, you know, there are differences between, you know, different media companies, if you like, that, 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 that ultimately reflects their brand, I think. What's quality journalism? What does that mean? It's a good, that's a good question, Anthony. I mean, quality journalism, I suppose, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder. So, you know, I'm the beholder, perhaps, or it's my eye. Um, the, the, the first thing, I suppose, is, is fairness and balance. That's a, a, an important principle. 
Um, also, um, you know, the fact that your that your goal is to seek the truth, um, and then um, that you actually spend time researching. Um, that you know you're making that effort, you're putting the time in, um, and you know then it comes to other aspects of you know presentationally quality would be you know how well written is it you know is it yeah. really clear and engaging and maybe even fun you know so it goes all the way from intent to the sort of the way you polish and, and present the final product I think when you, when you talk about uh, truth it's easy to be uh, cynical and I remember. Uh, somebody saying that news is it's not truth it's the facts available at the time uh, how comfortable are journalists with that uh, n well I'll call it a necessity I think it's a necessity I see it as a necessity in some ways or you know educate or tell me I'm wrong jock <laughs> no no it's a good point Anthony actually I mean I don't think that journalism necessarily presents the truth I mean it doesn't deliberately try not to present the truth but I think it tries to find the truth, to reach the truth, and as you say, it has only a certain limited um, number or amount of facts available, and then that's what it presents. Yeah. But the, the intention to seek the truth, I think, is very important. Mm. What you actually get in the end, well, you know, you get something that, you know, you, you get in the real world. Yeah. Jock, what's your advice then to people in business, in politics, who uh, having to face the media and answer questions, what's your advice to them? I think it's good to get to know how the media works and to understand it from the media's perspective as well as from um, your own perspective. I think um, get to know certain individual journalists and, and perhaps cultivate relationships, know who you can trust. Um, and, you know, I think engaging is important. Now, that doesn't mean obviously saying everything and, you know, answering every question with, uh, you know, sort of um, completely sort of gormless openness. But um, I think, um, you know, it, the, the, the more you engage, then the more that you get to understand what's, what's happening with, with the journalist, what their intentions are, where they're going with it. And, um, you know, ultimately by closing down, that's a whole other risk. So it might not... It, Closing down might not be the best sort of strategy. Mm. Do you have in mind a couple of e either people in business or in politics who, or or celebrities? We see a lot of celebrities in the news these days, uh, who are who are effective interviewees who you see as as models, potential models. I got a little theory that it, it's a kind of a naturalness um, and a kind of a down-to-earthness that, that actually is really effective either with, say, business people or politicians. Yeah. I think one of the problems Julia Gillard has is that she kind of was like that before and now she isn't, whereas you take a, a successful politician who retired while he was still on top, Peter Beattie, and he just had that kind of common touch. You know, He'd speak to you kind of like you'd think he'd speak to you in a room if he was with you. You know, and yet it, it was on TV. So you kind of think, oh, he's a good bloke, you trust him. So that kind of trustworthiness comes from being kind of natural, I think. Yeah. And that's a good sort of skill to develop. I mean, actually, how does being natural be a skill? Well, I think you can, be, you can lose your naturalness by trying to have an artificial presentation on yeah. TV. If you can go back to that real person, mm. I, personally, I think you might be better off. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's that's one of the main uh, people ask sometimes. You know, what's the point of media training? Is that sort of uh, mega spin doctoring or something? And it, it, it's it's quite far from that, um, almost all the time. And in closing, uh, what about the? I asked John Howard a couple of years ago what he what was his advice to new politicians, younger politicians, and he said there's no such thing as off the record. Is that true? <laughs> Well, I think he speaks from experience, um, and you know, there's there's two ways of looking at that. There's the way that he's sort of suggesting that perhaps he'd been betrayed or knows a lot of cases of betrayal. I think that's a good point. You know, he 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 wouldn't be lying when he's 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 referring to particular situations. I mean, Peter, Peter Costello had a classic one, I think, where um, someone. Um, some political reporter ultimately, I think it was Michael Brissenden, ultimately took an off-the-record conversation on the record about the leadership thing. I think mm. uh, that's, but that's just one, you know, obvious example. The other, the other side is, you know, off the record. You think that, you know, 
you're protected because people don't know what you're saying. But ultimately, the information does get out there. So, you know, the distinction between off the record and on the record in those cases, you know, becomes more complex perhaps. But that's maybe a more subtle is version it, of the situation. Would a fair uh, dividing of, of an issue like that be around, one, the, the level of public interest in the topic at hand, and two, come back to your point about trust. You, you know that I, think, mate, I think it's mainly about trust. I mean, I think the level of public interest is kind of like a, a pretext for, for a betrayal. And, you know, personally, if it's off the record with me and I'm not going to reveal my source, then, you know, I, I feel I would go to jail to that point, you know, um, because that's a, a, a promise. Now, you know, maybe that's a little bit sort of <laughs> highfalutin. But, you know, that's the kind of idea. It's like, you know, are you a trustworthy person or are you not? And, you know, how do you really know that if you're trusting a journalist? And that, and that probably takes a long time. It does take a, a development of a relationship possibly over years. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jock, I could t uh, talk with you all day. You have so much interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, but I'd better let you get back to work. Thanks so thanks, much. Anthony. Th thanks, Anthony. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. See you, mate. Okay, bye.